It's February 13th, and I hope you guys all got candy and flowers overpriced for your girlfriend and your mom, because tomorrow's Valentine's Day, and you know there's not going to be any forgiveness if you forgot to get that box of chocolates. But I've got an even better idea. Why don't you get your girl a dozen Dogecoin? It's a gift that'll last a lot longer than a dozen roses, and it's a little bit cheaper. But one day, it'll almost certainly be worth more than a dozen roses, so why not turn Valentine's Day into an investment opportunity? But good luck convincing your girl that a dozen doges is better than a dozen roses. All right, let's get into the content. Right now, according to Coin Market Cap, it looks like Dogecoin is still holding strong in the number ninth place position of cryptocurrencies bar market cap. Unfortunately, though, it does look like Polygon is probably about to flip Dogecoin and take the number ninth place position. But fortunately, it does look like Dogecoin is going to be staying in the top 10 for quite some time, hopefully. Everybody likes to talk crap on Dogecoin a whole bunch, but it has stayed up here in the top 10, and it's been here historically throughout the pretty much the whole history of cryptocurrency. There's been a couple of times that it has fallen out of the top 10, but it always comes roaring right back. And the same people that want to talk trash on Dogecoin all the time are always saying that the best cryptocurrency projects to be invested in are in the top 10. I don't know why they exclude Dogecoin whenever they say the top 10 is the best investments, but in my opinion, that just leaves us a bunch of opportunity because if they don't want to buy this Dogecoin, then all of us can buy the Dogecoin and ride it up to the moon whenever it finally does have a pump. Just imagine if people were sleeping on Ethereum or Bitcoin. I mean, they have been over the bear market, obviously, but imagine if they were super underpriced and then people suddenly started to realize that these are some top cryptocurrency projects. I think that's probably what we're going to start seeing in the next bull market for Dogecoin because it has been around and it has proven the test of time showing that it can stand around and that it has a really great community that's just not going to leave the project. So in the next bull market, I think that Dogecoin is going to be a force to be reckoned with, and people are actually going to have to start to show the project and the community a little bit of respect. In my last video, I was talking about the SEC banning staking, and it looks like they have banned staking on Kraken. I did ask in the comments if it was possible for them to ban staking, but this isn't exactly what I was talking about. I know I wasn't very specific, but in my opinion, I don't think that staking on exchanges is actual staking. You're just really lending out your cryptocurrency to these exchanges so that they can lend it out to whales and stuff like that, and they can use leverage to trade with your cryptocurrency and make a big profit while you take on all the risk. Through many centralized exchanges like Crypto.com, you were able to supposedly stake Bitcoin and Dogecoin and all kinds of other projects that aren't even proof of stake. This doesn't even make sense unless they're actually just lending out your cryptocurrency. And I think that that's a huge risk that you don't need to take. You definitely want to keep your cryptocurrency in a cold storage wallet because all of these centralized exchanges and their CEOs do not have your best interests at heart. They're just trying to make a huge profit while the getting is good. It is true that the cryptocurrency space is like the wild, wild west. And it is unregulated. So there's a lot of sharks that are taking over the space and trying to make that profit before the regulation comes and is put into place. And the traditional finance system wants to call you the dumb money, but in my opinion, you're the smart money because you're paying attention through the bear market and you're not going to be taken advantage of by these centralized entities. You're a smart cryptocurrency investor, and I know that you know that cryptocurrency is our only hope to get out of the traditional finance system and keeping your cryptocurrency on a centralized exchange is just giving the power right back to the same people. So don't be a beta and don't let these centralized entities cuck you. <laughs> so don't be a beta and don't let these centralized entities cuck you. Keep your crypto in a cold storage wallet and take self-custody because that's what real men do. <laughs> Dogecoin and the rest of the crypto market have been seeing a little bit of a cool back, cool off over here in the past couple of days. And it looks like we are dipping and have dipped about 17% from the high right here. This is a very healthy pullback in my opinion. And it looks like we are forming a bullish divergence here on the RSI. So hopefully we're going to make another pump here and make a higher high. Confirming that this little bit of a relief rally is going to continue. And will continue to the upside as the whole crypto market continues to make a series of higher highs and higher lows here. Bitcoin also has a bullish divergence here on the RSI, but as I was saying in one of my previous videos, I still think that it could come back down here to retest this 200-day moving average at the worst case scenario. If it breaks below the 200-day moving average though, I think this is a failed breakout and we're unfortunately probably going to be going a little bit lower than that, but I think that the 200-day moving average is pretty solid support and a lot of times we will come back down to retrace it whenever we start another leg of a bull market. 
Also, with the MACD starting to converge on itself with these red bars turning a little bit more pink, this is a bullish indicator, and I think we're going to start seeing this blue line converge up towards this red line as this RSI divergence starts to play out and we start to pump back to the upside. New CPI data is set to be released tomorrow, and if this does show that inflation is continuing to cool off, then that's going to be a positive sign for the Fed continuing to lower their interest rates or slow down their interest rate hikes, and this is probably going to be a bullish indicator for the whole market. But there is some uncertainty because if you look at the previous CPI release, it was a little bit higher than the previous one from November. In November, we were starting to see core CPI cool off pretty significantly, but that slowing pace actually slowed down a bit, and it looks like we started to see inflation picking back up slightly in December, with the exception of energy, of course. As you can see, the price of apparel was down negative 2.9% in November, but it was only down negative 2.5% in December. With new vehicles going from negative 0.5% to negative 0.3%, if we continue to see these numbers tick up a little bit more like this, then the Fed might continue to be more skeptical and they might actually hold those interest rates higher for longer or they might even do another 25 basis point hike that nobody's expecting. One of the big things that did have us continue to go down in CPI readings was the energy, as I said, because it continued to go to the downside last month. But looking at this chart for the U.S. regular all formulations of gas price or the national average gas price here in America, you can see that the gas prices have actually started to tick up over the past month, and this will probably show in the CPI data making a pretty scary reading, and this might actually send us to the downside some more. If this does come in higher than expected, then I think this will probably send Bitcoin down to this 200-day moving average, and that's the area of support we're going to be looking at to hopefully prevent us from falling any lower and send us back to the upside with that series of higher highs and higher lows that I was looking for. I don't want to be bearish or anything, but we do have to take into consideration these rising energy costs and the possibility that interest rates will continue higher and inflation will continue to run out of control. But according to the 210 yield curve, it is super inverted and it looks like the economy should be coming to a screeching halt any day now. So whenever this inversion actually does start to play out, I think the Fed is going to have to be a lot more dovish. And if the Fed can't pull off this soft landing like people are starting to apparently think that he can then we might see lower asset prices along with a cooling off of all prices, including gas. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Is that going to be a good thing for us or a bad thing? Do you want prices to go down as far as food and gas, or would you like for cryptocurrency and assets to go up? I don't really know if we can have both. Either way, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time. Bye. Oh, hey, I was just being chased by a bear. Watch out. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and that notification bell too, because I don't want you to miss out on any important updates. And check out this video. Oh, crap, I got to get out of here.